Hello Euros and welcome to the French Wars of Religion. The French Wars of Religion were a series of civil wars. Civil war just means it's fought internally in a country between French Catholics and French Calvinists called Huguenot from 1562 to 1598. While the wars were caused fundamentally by religious differences, they were also the result of a power struggle between competing noble families. Let's start by looking at the introduction and development of Calvinism into France. Calvinism is an austere Protestant religion founded by John Calvin that emerged in the wake of Lutheranism. It grew rapidly after being introduced into France. Remember, John Calvin himself was French, even though he first introduced his ideas in Switzerland. And by 1560, roughly 10% of the French population had embraced what they called the Reformed faith. Now, 10% does not sound like a lot, and truly, it isn't a lot. What's important is who was becoming Calvinist. Hopefully, by now, you're beginning to understand that being a peasant amounted to being nothing at all, at least politically and socially. And at this time, roughly 80% of the French population were peasants, and all of them, for the most part, were sticking with Catholicism. The people who embraced Calvinism were those who had something to gain from a religion that challenged the power of the royal family, namely the nobility and members of the emerging middle class or artisan classes. These people would benefit from a change in the social order and they would benefit from a limitation being placed on monarchical authority. Estimations are that nearly 50% of the nobility converted to Calvinism and that posed a tremendous threat to royal authority, especially considering that the leading family of the Calvinist faction, the Bourbons of the Navarre region, were next in line to inherit the French throne. Add into the mix an extremely unstable monarchy due to the untimely death of King Henry II and you have all the ingredients for a civil war fueled by religious intolerance. Let's start by recognizing the main participants. The Valois family was the royal family of France, and they were staunchly Catholic. From 1547 to 1559, Henry II was the king of France. And following his father's lead, he permitted persecution of the Huguenots. His accidental and sudden death in 1559 created problems because his heirs were young, they were weak, and they were dominated by their mother, Catherine de' Medici. His first son, Francis II, who died in 1561, and then Francis' youngest, young, excuse me, younger brother, Charles IX, were both considered too young and too incapable to rule, and so Catherine de' Medici served as a regent for both of her sons. On a random side note, Francis II's wife was Mary, Queen of Scots. Mary returned to Scotland after his death and created all sorts of trouble for her Protestant cousin Elizabeth in England. But that is a story for another day. Catherine de, Catherine de Medici overall tended to be rather moderate and looked to compromise rather than eradication of the Huguenot. Unfortunately, not everyone in France was as willing as she to play well with others. The leading family of the ultra-Catholic faction was the Guise family. They not only supported the Catholic cause, they hoped that they could gain control of the monarchy by controlling the weak Valois kings and the regent Catherine. Since the family was so determined to crush Protestantism in France, they had the support of the Pope and Jesuits. The leading member of the Guise family held the title of Duke. The two dukes who played the largest role in the civil wars were Francis in the early years and Henry in the later years. Finally, the dominant Huguenot family was the Bourbon family. You'll be hearing this name a lot in Euro. The Bourbon family ruled the region of Navarre in southern France. 
Marguerite de Navarre had been instrumental in spreading the Calvinist faith in France by encouraging mediation and cooperation between Protestants and Catholics, and her grandson, Henry, was one of its, one of its meaning Calvinism or Huguenotism, one of its strongest defenders against Catholic persecution. Oh, and he also happened to be cousin to the King of France, and so had a claim to the throne of France. The first outbreak of violence was in 1562, and it was a strike by Francis the Duke of Guise against a worshipping group of Huguenots in the city of Vassy in northeastern France. This led to a decade of intermittent warfare between the two groups, the Huguenot and the Catholics. For the most part, it was on again, off again, and no side really gained a significant advantage. By, seven, by 1572, 10 years after the strike at Vassy, Catherine de' Medici was anxious to end the violence and reach a compromise. What was the main way for rival factions to compromise in the 1500s? Marriage, of course. Catherine de' Medici arranged the marriage of her daughter, who was the sister of the king, to Henry of Navarre, the leader of the Huguenots. Since this was a royal wedding, everyone who was anyone, Catholic or Calvinist, came to Paris for the wedding. The Duke of Guise saw this as an opportunity to wipe out the infidel Calvinists and managed to convince Catherine de' Medici, still serving as regent for her second son, to order the execution of Huguenot leaders converging on Paris as a preemptive measure. Thousands of people were called in the resulting St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre, and Henry of Navarre barely escaped with his life, and for that matter his wife, by promising to convert to Catholicism, a promise he reneged on when he was safely out of the city. The plan to eliminate Huguenot from France failed, and the Huguenot eventually rallied and the civil wars continued. In 1576, just a couple of years after the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre, under the new Duke, Henry, the Guise family tried to strengthen their position and gain control of the French throne by creating a Holy League. This encouraged outside Catholic powers like Spain to support the Guise family in overthrowing the French king, Henry III. This is the third son of Henry II, who had died young and left a series of ineffectual rulers who were controlled by mom, Catherine de' Medici. Henry III was the first of these brothers who ruled on his own rather than having his mother rule for him. By this time, the King of France and the leader of the Huguenot, Henry of Navarre, were getting tired of all of the fighting. It was bad for France because it weakened the country and put it at the mercy of outside powers, oh, like Spain. They felt it was time to move on and put the religious acrimony behind them. People like King Henry III and Henry of Navarre, who put the welfare of France ahead of their own religious beliefs, were referred to as politiques. They and others like them believed that religion was not worth fighting over, at least not when it would ultimately destroy the nation. This last stage of the French Wars of Religion was called the War of the Three Henrys because, wait for it, there were three guys named Henry who were fighting. Two of these Henrys were on the same side, King Henry III and Henry of Navarre fighting to preserve France and end the civil wars by getting rid of the ultra-Catholic faction, while Henry, Duke of Guise, was fighting to overthrow the existing monarchy and establish a completely Catholic state, which would mean, of course, the eradication of any Calvinists. The two politique Henrys, this one right here and this one, were ultimately successful in ordering the assassination of Henry, Duke of Guise, and then destroying the Holy League. 
However, not everyone was pleased that King Henry III had cooperated with the Huguenots, and in 1589 he was assassinated by a wacko monk who didn't think about the fact that with the childless King Henry III dead, his cousin Henry of Navarre, the leader of the Huguenots, would become King of France. For his part, Henry of Navarre realized that France would not accept a Protestant king. Remember, only 10% of the population is Protestant. And so being the consummate politique that he was, he converted, again, and this time for good, to Catholicism, and became King Henry IV, saying famously that Paris is well worth a mass, meaning to become king, I can handle being Catholic. This should have ended the fighting in France, and for the most part it did. However, there was still overt persecution of Huguenots to protect them and end the internal strife, and for that matter, to strengthen himself as a monarch. King Henry IV issued the Edict of Nantes in 1598. It recognized Calvinist, excuse me, recognized Catholicism as the official religion of France, and stated that the King of France would always be Catholic. However, it allowed for the freedom of Huguenot to worship in certain places within France. So they had the freedom of worship. It gave them the right to maintain their own fortified towns. This was for their own protection. And then they were also allowed to run their own schools, since the official French school system was controlled by the Catholic Church. Lastly, Huguenot, under the Edict of Nantes, were allowed to hold public office. While the Edict of Nantes seems like a great statement of religious toleration, it really wasn't. It basically created a France within France, populated just by Huguenot. And that was a system that will be attacked by Henry IV's grandson, this guy right here, who we'll get to in a month or so, in the 1540s. That, my friends, is a brief summary of the French Wars of Religion. I hope it's a bit easier to understand. As usual, if you have questions, ask. Have a lovely evening, and I will see you tomorrow.